Hello, and welcome to the third video in our series on creating a web-based mapping application. In the last video, we created the framework for a Flask app and added map libre code to display a base map. In this video, we'll spool up an instance of PG TileServe, which will serve as our endpoint for adding data in our Postgres instance onto our map. I think it's worth noting again here that the actual outside world is going to be interacting with the tile server rather than Postgres itself. This way we sort of control what users can see without giving them direct access to our data. We're going to be using Docker to start up our PG tile serve instance. And so if you just Google that, there's a Docker image already created. And so we're going to use essentially this text here, uh, saying Docker run, and then giving database information on how to connect to our database um, and telling it to download the latest PG tile serve. Um, as well as the port forwarding for information that PG tile serve is going to be running on. In a previous video, we had spooled up an instance of PostGIS and PG admin and put data into it. And I'll link those videos in the comments. We're going to keep using Docker for this, uh, which is a really nice way to get this sort of software installed on your computer without actually having to install anything except for Docker. Um, that way, if you don't like it, you know you can go ahead and delete the image. And there's really no changes to your computer system itself, which is, which is really nice. Um, if you've already got your own instance of Postgres running elsewhere, that's fine. Uh, you just change the information that you pass into PG TileServe as you set that up. So if we go and copy this and paste it here, we have to make a few quick changes. Uh, the first being, we are going to want to make sure that this is on the same Docker network as our Postgres instance. And in the video where we set that up, we had just called the network pgnet. And then we have to give it our actual information for logging into Postgres. Um, so they nicely put in sort of placeholders. We used the default username. Our host, because it's also inside of Docker, is just going to be the container name. Um, but if you're running this via IPs or on separate computers, you would just put the IP here. And then the database name. We had set ours to Flight Radar. And I believe everything else is good as is. So we hit go. Um, because I had installed this previously, the image is already downloaded, so it might take a little bit longer for your first go. Um, but now we see that we have our PG tile serve instance running. So if we navigate over to port 7800, which is what you'd set that up on, um, it goes ahead and looks through your Postgres for you, and it actually figures out the tables that you've got in there. So if we go over to PG Admin, the only tables that we have in here really are airports and flights, where we just take a look at one of these. Airports is just airport locations with some additional information um, as point data. And flights are individual um, coordinates of airplane locations. And it has sort of figured this out for us. So we can uh, preview these. So we can take a look at the airports, and we get um, our worldwide mapping of airports, and we can take a look at flights, um, which I believe is going to be a lot slower to load in just due to the sheer amount of data. So PG TileServe is incredibly quick to set up, and there are tons of alternatives out there, which I believe they even point out on their documentation. But what they say is their strength is this ability to auto-configure because they're specific to just Postgres. Right, so if we wanted to um, get this put onto our web page, we're going to need to steal this piece of information. Um, and we'll, we'll leave this here. So if you go into one of the JSONs, this gives you your tire, tile URL endpoint. Um, so how do we add a vector tile to MapLibre? So if we look at the MapLibre examples page and scroll down, they've got a how to add a third-party vector tile source example. Um, so we can kind of steal this. 
So just like in our example, they've created a map, which is their base layer. And then somewhere they've got a, an endpoint that they can hit for their tile server, which we can see it looks a lot like ours in the JSON with these uh, Z, X, and Ys in these curly brackets. Um, so I'm going to steal actually all of this. Um, and then we are going to change things to map our circumstances. Cool, so we've got our map here. And of course, it doesn't helpfully indent it. Um, the first thing to call out here is this map.onload. So what this is saying is wait for the actual map object here to load. And then we're going to start adding stuff to it. And there's sort of two things that happen inside of that. The first is this add source which just lets us point to a source endpoint, but it doesn't actually add anything to the map. And then we've got this add layer, which is where content actually gets added to the map. Um, so I believe if we loaded our page now and zoomed to where this is between 6 and 14, it would show up on our map. Um, but this is not exactly what we want. So our source. Um, we can call it something else. Um, airports make sense. It is vector. Our endpoint is not going to be this. Um, but if we jump back here, we can to our JSON. We'll steal that endpoint and paste it in. Um, and we can change our min zoom. Just go to zero twenty two. Not sure if these are required, but. Couldn't hurt to leave them in. Actually, want to take a quick pause right here. As I'm going through and editing this, I'm realizing that I copied and pasted localhost and the port into this project without really talking about um, how you shouldn't do that. Um, in this case, it is totally fine because we are only running this project on my local host. So this will absolutely work and cause us no problems. If this were to go out into the world, we would have to edit this to make sure that this is the IP address of your tile server itself or the URL that it can be found on. Um, and if that's going to be the same URL as your Flask app, you can use Flask to figure out what this endpoint is going to be. Um, but just note that if you're making an actual map app using PG tile server, this is going to have to be um, more specific. And this will absolutely not work as is. Um, OK, so then adding a layer, um, I'm just going to go down and Change these as we go. So, okay, so ID. Uh, the source has to map up with this. So this has to be uh, airports. The source layer is going to be the table name. Um, I believe just because of how PG tile serve works, is it puts that as the source layer. Um, our data is point data, so the type here is circle. Um, I don't think we need layout because that's not relevant here. Um, I am going to give it some information on how to display it. That's what paint is for in MapLibre. So we'll tell it to have a circle radius of three pixels. And we'll make them blue. That up a little bit. All right, so we've got our map that on load. Get rid of their comments. Um, we've got our map that add source, and we've got our map that add layer. So with these two functions inside of our on load, we can navigate back to our page, and now we've got point data on our map. Um, and if you ever have questions about what kind of things you can do inside of that add later layer or or add source. Um, we're using MapLibre, but MapLibre is a spin-off of Mapbox GLJS. And so uh, you can either Google Mapbox GLJS and documentation and add layer and it will give you a, a really nice table of of what you can add. Um, but there's also a ton of examples out in the world, as well as a ton of info on Stack Overflow. All right, so 
what if we wanted to have some sort of ability to hover over these and get information as we as we go? Uh, Map Libre has got some examples for that. So if we head back over to the Map Libre examples and search for pop up, um, there's a few options we can display it on click or display it on hover. Um, let's try hover and see what that looks like. All right, so let's scroll past all of this GeoJSON that they've got. Okay, here we go. So this is the crucial code right here, um, and it's got a, it's got a few things. Um, first, it creates an empty pop-up instance. So just by creating this variable that we can use as our pop-up. Um, the second is when there's a mouse enter event on the what they're calling places. I'm assuming that's just their their layer name. We go they go ahead and get the coordinate to place it and the description. And so their description is going to be the feature properties. Uh, they're just the description inside of there. So in their GeoJSON, they've got a description key. Um, but you can you know, group multiple properties together to make that description however you want to do it. Um, and then they set the pop-up coordinate, set the HTML, and add it to the map. So setting it as HTML is actually pretty important to understand. They're just setting it as the description text. So whatever text they had in there. And it looks like their text actually has HTML in it, but you can style this however you would like. And then the third thing is this uh, on mouse leave, and they just remove that pop-up they had created up here. So we're going to recreate that exact same structure um, in our code. Um, and I'm actually just going to copy some that I have and walk through it rather than make you uh, watch me type it all out. So as we copy this in, um, note that we're putting it still inside of map.onload right after we add our layer. So we create our initial pop-up. Um, we've got our map.onMouseEnter. We've made sure that this name here matches our layer ID. We're going to create our own description based on the key value pairs inside of our feature properties. We've got some code here that if we're zoomed out far enough, that will repeat this pop-up on every instance of, of, of this airport. Um, and then we turn, or we set our lat long and our HTML description, and we add this pop-up back on the map. And then once we mouse off of that, it will remove the pop-up. So now if we head back to our map and um, reload it, now as we scroll around, we're actually getting information about the airport. All right, so I want to pause and take a quick second about where we are. Um, at this point, we've got our little Flask web app that we're really truly not taking advantage of the fact that it is Python, that it could connect to Postgres. But we are serving up an HTML file, right now just a single HTML file, that has some JavaScript and some CSS to display a map. And that map on the client side, when it gets rendered, is then going to a tile server that we've set up that is serving up custom data that we've got in our Postgres. And it was truly a minimal amount of work to make this happen. So there's a, there's a bunch more that we can do. There's a lot more we can add on the web page side of things. There's a lot more that we can do on the web server side of things. So in the next video, we're going to focus on this web server portion. And what we're going to do in that video is allow a user to select an airport and then show them all of the point data for flights that are either leaving or coming to that airport. And that will kind of look like this. We'll display information that we queried from the database here. So in this case, the user has selected um, Washington Reagan National Airport. And we've got all the points displayed um, that we have either going to or from that airport. As always, the code will be linked in the description. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.